not a great session at all. What happened? James, the market down by a massive one and a half percent, and that's after some pretty flat leads coming through from the U.S. We did see a number of factors uh, coming into force during the Asian session, and I guess a major factor was that we did see China being sold off quite heavily. The Shanghai Composite down by 1.4 percent. It does look like a report in the Xinhua paper about China actively considering uh, expanding property taxes has had an impact on China and then the rest of the region. But we've also seen the U.S. futures down by. 0.7 percent. We know there are a lot of factors at play at the moment and one of those is that we're possibly seeing some risks to global growth once again. We've seen Japan coming out with third quarter GDP contracting and looking like a contraction in the fourth quarter which would mean that Japan's possibly in a recession at the moment. Also looking at Europe where that decision on Greece was due on the 12th of November but has been pulled out possibly till the 26th of November and then over in the US looking at a fiscal cliff. In the last few days we've also heard some news from India where we've seen industrial production actually down by 0.4 percent when uh, the market was expecting a rise of 2.8 percent. So once again it does look like a number of factors coming into play. Unfortunately that's been bad news for our market today and the Australian market often seen as a derivative of our China situation or of global growth as well and if we have a look across the market as you mentioned James red across the board every single sector trading lower today if we have a look at our market today we were uh, sold off quite heavily but we did see some stocks uh, actually reaching 52 week highs which is amazing in in this type of market yesterday we saw some of the retail discretionary stocks actually hitting 52 week highs and yesterday we saw stocks like specialty fashion house as well as cash converters and flexi group hitting 52 week highs today we saw premier investments actually hitting a 52 week high and the retail shop uh, the reject shop also reaching a 52 week high so we are starting to see some signs of life in that discretionary retail space we also saw a 52-week high for cochlear shares. Uh, we saw Rock Oil as well as uh, Credit Corp uh, reaching a 52-week high. So there were some stocks with some positive performances, but across the board we saw losses. And we also saw losses extending from yesterday. QB Insurance, Linus, Paladin, these are all stocks which saw some pretty big falls on yesterday's market. But unfortunately those falls actually continuing into today's market. So we're not far off the end of 2012 now and it does look like it has uh, been a year for those defensives. We've seen the healthcare space up by a massive 33%. We've seen uh, the telecom space up by 24% and the property space up by 22%. And with the market weakness looking like it's continuing, it's really those defensives which are very much in favour. So there's a good chance we could, as we enter 2013, look back and see that October 18th is maybe the, the high. Where, if that's the case, I mean, where do you potentially see the the broader index actually finishing what sort of level would you be looking at below where we are now I think I've just gone back and had a look at previous peaks because usually when we look at year-end targets we base it on earnings but there shouldn't be too much new information coming through uh, on in regards to earnings before the end of the year AGM season has almost passed us we've seen a few downgrades associated with that but if we have a look at past peaks and I guess looking at around about 34 trading days till the end of the year and average out sort of the last five peaks that we've seen we'll probably see the index back at about 4,414 points even when the market goes down it doesn't go down in a straight line so no doubt that we will see some small rallies uh, before year end as well but it does look like we may have peaked now on the 18th of October once again it's been a year where the market has firmly focused on the defensives and we really haven't seen that shift into growth that we usually see at some time during that interest rate cycle where we are seeing rates going down in fact if we have a look across the sectors the healthcare space is probably the only space where we haven't seen high yields and yet we've seen a good performance and that's because the healthcare sector has actually shown a considerable growth and momentum in positive in positive terms uh, of earnings so the healthcare space up by 33 percent of course the other two that have performed well the telecom as well as the property space these are both areas which are very high yielding the telecom space with a yield of about seven percent and if we have a look at the property space a yield of 5.5 percent so it does look like investors still staying in those defensives and we're still waiting for that move into to that uh, more growth related strategy that we haven't really seen come through in 2012. Look, a lot of interest, uh, an awful lot of interest outside of what the broader index is doing. Um, some interesting moves at the at the stock level, Julie. We might start with Kadeco. I think it might have been the worst 
performer today off the back of a, a placement. She's come out of a trading halt and, uh, and bang. I think there's been two reasons for the big fall that we've seen in Cadeco shares. And Cadeco has been the worst performer, down by 13.5% in one session. Now, the first thing to consider is that this stock hasn't traded since the 23rd of October. So it's come back online after a couple of weeks where the stock has not traded at all. And secondly, it's come back online after announcement about a capital raising $30 million at $4.30. Now, the reason why it's significant that we haven't seen this stock trade since the 23rd of October is because since then we've seen copper stocks and copper prices deteriorating. In fact, if we have a look at performances of stock, stocks, copper stocks from the 23rd of October, we've seen the big stocks like Oz Minerals and Sandfire down by 10% in that time, and we've seen the smaller ones like Tiger Resources down by 22% in that time. So number one, Cadeco has had to play a catch-up with those copper stocks and the falls that we've seen in that time in copper stocks. Secondly, the market has had to factor in the dilution effect of that $30 million capital raising. What's concerning about the price action today is that it's fallen below the capital raising price. Now, they're looking to raise capital at $4.30. Some of that will be to offshore investors, so about $12.3 million of that, $12.8 million of that will be to offshore investors. But the rest of that will be here domestically to sophisticated investors. And with the capital raising price now above the current market price, it's going to be a difficult job at the current rate. So it's going to be interesting to see whether Cadeco needs to drop that capital raising price because it doesn't look like this capital raising is underwritten but really Cadeco coming online after two weeks of being in a trading halt where we have seen those copper stocks displaying some weakness and the stock down by 13 and a half percent today.